Hello, my name is Fenna. Welcome to Following Fenna. I am a certified coach and counselor and I work with people in a limited episode and also with their partner. Now, the slippery slope of an emotional affair. The emotional affair can be as dangerous and destructive as a physical affair. How to know if you are in one or heading in that direction and how to pull the brakes? Or do you think that your partner has an emotional affair and how do you deal with that? In this video, I'm going to explain to you what to do. The emotional affair, the strong bond a person develops outside their relationship with another person. Now, most affairs are limerent, meaning there is a toxic and addicted, addictive and fixation slash obsession towards the other person. We call them the limerent object. And in this case, in this video, I'll also talk about the affair partner, but I mean the other person. And limerence by nature is destructive for everyone involved. Now, before I give you some signs for you to check if you are having or maybe you're heading or you're already in an emotional affair or to check if your partner has one, I'm going to talk a bit about this concept because the physical boundaries have not been yet crossed. So what is everybody whining about? I mean, what's wrong in having emotional support from somebody else? What's wrong with having an emotional affair? Well, the problem are the stages and what they do to your current relationship. Because affairs always progress, meaning they are not stable. They never stay in one phase. And the stages are... First, we have the glimmer slash the meeting slash the, the moment that we find the other person attractive. Then we have the innocent stage, which is friends. Maybe they convince themselves or maybe they are convincing you, oh, we're just friends. We're just friends who send each other 600 texts per day. Then we have the cribbing stage. And that means there is complaining to the affair partner about our life or about our current partner or relationship. So we're oversharing. We're talking about deep emotional things that probably should be shared with our spouse. Then we have the fixation phase. Here is where the obsessing takes place. We have biases. We're thinking that we're thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. My life will be better with this person. Thinking that we are soulmates. Here the addiction kicks in. And that means in this phase there is a chemical imbalance and we seek the other person in order to feel good or not so bad because we're going in withdrawal. Then we have the building phase. We're gonna make decisions together. People are playing house. Shall I buy these shoes or shall I buy that shoes? Little or big shared decisions. And this means you're withdrawing from your current relationship. And sometimes you're actually fantasizing or you are taking steps leaving your marriage for the other person. Now, why is this bad for your marriage? It's because an emotional affair stops the investment in your current relationships. Things that should be addressed with our spouse now is shared with another person. Our priority is not with our spouse anymore. We invest time, we invest energy, emotions, and sometimes a lot of money. Gifts are being bought in a, for another person and we invest in them. So we take away the investment in our partner and we invest in the other person. And the more we invest, the more we create that bond. 
In fact, one of the ways to see if a person is really interested you interested in you in early dating is to see how much investment there is, how much they invest in time and energy and money. So investing in the other person automatically automatically means you stop investing in your current marriage. And I've heard limerents tell me they send over 500 texts per day and they spend three hours per day on the phone with their emotional affair partner. And sometimes they say, yeah, but then I also invest in my friends and sometimes I talk about my relationship or my partner with my friends. Yeah, I'm sure you do. That's what our friends are for. But probably not in cost of your relationship. The marriage does not get damaged by you talking to your friend. You can combine the two. And in an emotional affair, you don't combine anymore. You overshare, you deepen and deepen and you escalate the bonds. And you're probably also a little bit defensive and secretive about that. And of course, lying is a good indication that there is something shady going on. Keeping secrets means there is something going on and boundaries are being crossed. I sometimes tell my clients, how do you know that things are not platonic? Is look at your physical reactions. When my best friend, and I love her to death, calls me, I don't get a red face and my heart doesn't start to pound. I don't feel the, <gasps> this reaction to my body. So that's a good indication um, when your body or slash your nervous system reacts to the other. Um, if that happens, you're not platonic or at least not anymore. So the investment is damaging to your relationship. Now, in an emotional affair, we really start to think and we have all these biases. And one of them is counterfactual thinking. We really start to think that our life will be better with this other person. And in crystallization, which is another bias, we vilify our current partner and relationship in comparison with the oh so magnificent other, which we objectify, by the way. We call it limerent object for a reason, but okay. There's another bias. We use our feelings as proof that this is in fact a good, solid, meaningful bond that we need to explore. We call that emotional reasoning. It's also a bias. We use our feelings as proof. When in fact... Why affairs feel so intense has more to do with our reward system gone crazy than with the healthy and meaningful bond. So the biases will also drive us further into thinking we should continue this. And then we also have the addiction playing out, meaning that we don't that if we don't have contact, we start to feel bad. We will have withdrawal symptoms. That's because our reward system has gone, uh, made us, actually made us addicted. So we have multiple reasons why we continue this while we know that this is bad. But why? Why do we do that? Why do we have emotional affairs if we're hurting everyone, including ourselves? Well, of course, people give several reasons or explanations, you know, going from, yeah, well, people are just not monogamous by nature and sometimes we're just selfish. And well, I don't know about these two, but most of the time there is a deeper reason. I'm not saying that to give somebody justification, but people have affairs and they have a deeper reason and in general they have little or nothing to do with our spouse it's much more complex than that and sometimes 
people describe that affairs that an affair is an attempt to fix something the fixing of a core need that is not being met and instead of addressing this with the right person we turn to another human being in order to get our needs met maybe there's boredom maybe there was a loss prior to the start of the affair maybe there was a life event event maybe there was unhealed grief maybe there were sexual problems or needs or maybe we wanted to feel alive maybe there was un unaddressed or suppressed pain and trauma that was not healed yet whatever it is an emotional affair is most of the time an indication that something is going on and we use the emotional affair as a fixer as a number as a fleer as an escapism as a hider as a non-addresser as an addiction as a bad unhealthy coping and since we don't share what needs to be shared with our partner, we turn to another human being as a need fixer. So how do you know that you might be in an emotional affair? Well, number one, you think a lot about this person, fantasies, conversations in your head. Maybe you do have a lot of conversations actually, but you think about them a lot. Number two, you have the physical reactions I just described. Mm -hmm. Racing heart, blushing, etc. Your body reacts to this person. Number three, you do the counterfactual thinking. Number four, you think this might be your soulmate if you were only in a different time in a different place. Number five, you share things that you should share with your partner. Number six is you care less about your relationship. You are sloppy. You don't nourish your relationship anymore. Number seven is you rather spend time with the other person and it feels bad to not be in contact with this person. There are withdrawal signs and you cannot just let it go when you are out of contact. And number eight is you put the other person on a pedestal. Now, know that affairs and limerons are not a stable state. It feels amazing in the beginning. But once deterioration will set in, and it will set in, it will be painful and messy. Always. The highs will not last that's just not how dopamine works and affairs and limerence are dopamine driven. So what to do when you have to admit that you are in an emotional affair? And after this, I will talk, I will talk about what to do when you think or you know that your partner is having one. If you are in an emotional affair, you have to educate yourself that this is in fact an emotional affair and it's actually a pretty predictable thing it's pretty predictable and you will know you will learn about the statistics and the phases and you will learn that you are seriously harming your relationship for something that will not last please realize to never ever jeopardize the bond you have with your children um, or put them at risk for your LO or for the affair partner because the affair partner will not stay but the bond with your kids will be there forever and believe me I'm, I'm working with people in limerence so I'm working with people who are having affairs and I have seen devastating things of people breaking the bond with their kids damaging the bond forever now, hopefully deterioration will set in before you have actually made the decision to leave your uh, marriage and end up alone. It's not too late to turn the table. If you want to get out, write your uh, limerent object, your affair partner, a healthy goodbye text. 
something along the line of hey i realize that this situation is not good for me and it's affecting me in a negative way and i want to stop the contact and i hope you will not contact me anymore as i will not contact you anymore and i wish you all the best please don't do the romeo and juliet oh you know i cannot have contact with you anymore oh it's clean simple business likey clean and simple cut talk to your partner that you are having an emotional affair and address what is lacking in your life what do you want and what do you need and talk to them instead of talking to another half stranger that you've only met online or you've only met three times Share with your partner what is going on in your head and in your life. Be vulnerable with them instead of being vulnerable with the other person. Now, of course, breaking off contact, going no contact, and no contact is absolutely no contact with the affair partner is crucial if you want to get out of this and accept that you will probably most likely go through a grief period which is absolutely normal also in an affair your nervous system doesn't know the difference between a actual relationship or a um, affair relationship now what people describe in general when they have had an affair is that they felt alive there was novelty the promise doing new things discovering new things with their affair partner so doing new things with your current partner is really important even if you're together or maybe especially when you're together for 30 years it's so healthy it's one way to do to reconnect is doing new things new joint hobbies take on new projects together it's a way to keep and bring attraction back maybe even some sparkle doing new things unexpected things share new experiencing experiences doing new things together is the best medicine to keep attraction and also bring back attraction with your partner okay what are signs if you think you're partner is having an emotional affair well first of all it feels off and you're probably right number two is they are defensive of the other person when they are confronted number three is they are secretive about their phone and number four is the distance between you and your partner is growing the intimacy gap is widening and i don't i don't necessarily mean the physical intimacy but the intimacy overall number five is they can become very critical towards you maybe even hostile number six there are changes in their appearance number seven is the priority is on the other person kids are being neglected Time and money is spent, but not on you. It's spent in another area. What to do when you think your partner has an emotional affair? Well, try to calm down. You do have time. Try to talk to them in a non judging, non confrontal way. And I understand that that might be to a lot to ask of yourself but see how this sounds hey i noticed that you've been very distant towards us and towards me and you're less invested in our marriage and know that this is very much affecting me and i'm really worried know that i'm here and know that we can have a talk um, or have a look at what we can do about this and maybe what we both need maybe we can have an honest talk about our relationship do you see how that sounds you give them 
absolutely nothing to battle against. They don't have to vilify you. They don't have to defend their LO. They don't have to go to war in order to fight for their LO. They, they cannot really, well, like I said, they can vilify you. And how sweet are you? You understand them. You are open to have a look at what is going on and what you can do about that. And I'm not saying be their doormat and please them and never confront them and please them left and right in order for them to stay. Of course, you can set boundaries and of course, you'll probably lose it sometimes if you have a partner who sends another person 500 texts per day. Now, my advice for people with a person, with a, with a partner in an affair, an emotion, emotional or physical is different in two different situations. If your partner wants to stay, who is expressing that they want to stay, they're stopping the affair and their actions match their words, you have no choice but to be very patient. Do this together. Don't expect that the bond will immediately be okay because your, your limerent partner has to go through grief first. And in this period, you should take care of you. And during this phase, it's really hard to support your spouse who is in grief, who is in limerent grief, um, and simultaneously support yourself. But I've seen couples who done it. They survived. They went through the grief. Well, one person went through the grief and the other one was kind of watching and trying to support them and also try to take care of themselves. And they made it as a couple. Now, if your partner expresses that they want to leave and they are in fact taking steps to leave, they are leaving. Of course, you can push back a little and saying, hey, this is not my choice, but you will not convince them. Someone who is in limerence, unfortunately, you cannot convince them. Even more so, all your begging and pleading will push and drive them further away. And that's not fair, but that is how it works. Your only option is whether they one day will come back or not. Because you don't know that, but your only option is you have to move um, and with moving on, don't mean, you know, forget about this or don't allow yourself to take a lot of time to be sad and angry and grief and cry and be confused about the affair and the injustice about this, um, because that's all normal. But what I try, what I mean is try not to put your life on hold for years, waiting for the other person to come back or be a doormat to your limerent spouse, hoping that you can keep them or that they will come back. And have a lot of compassion to yourselves because this is not your fault. This is about them. Affairs are about them, not about you. And I understand that that's hard to believe because your ego has been crushed and your self-esteem has taken a big hit. But affairs are not about the current partner. Now, if you want my help in one-on-one -on -one coaching or email coaching, please have a look at the email address uh, in the description. And for now, I want to thank you for watching this video. And I hope to see you in another one. Bye.